ready for Time in the World. Time in the World. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreaches throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. talking about faith. Can I start? Uh, oh, okay, cool. Whew. I'm going to start now, y'all. Our, our lovely first lady exhorted us to be ourselves, so here we go. I'm gonna... I, yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? I, I've said this because God has given, gave me my own itty-bitty revelation about our uniqueness, and I think I've shared this once or twice before with a couple of people. I believe that God is so vast, so big, that he needs each one of the people on the planet, past, present, and future, to express a portion of himself. And so, like it or not, this is a part of God. (laughs) (laughs) Because like, remember Pastor said in the message, how he allowed us to go through our circumstances and live, raise up the way we were being raised and train up the way we were being trained. Then he's gonna take out that old spirit put in a new spirit, and then allow his spirit to be expressed through that personality. So, yeah, I am. So, Hebrews 11. I said I got to take the glasses off to read. Hebrews 11. Now, I want to read this out of the Amplified because it's really good. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. It said, now faith is the assurance or title deed confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as a fact what cannot cannot be experienced by physical senses. For by this kind of faith, for by this kind of faith, the men of old obtained divine approval. By faith, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God. We understand that the worlds, universe, ages, were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So that, I loved, when I read that, I had never read that in Amplified until today. I'm like, usually I'm so used used to faith in substance and things hoped for, evidence of things I've seen, blah, 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 blah. But when I read that, I was like, this is quite intense. Because it goes to the, the essence of who God is and how powerful he is. He spoke and the world's plural or the universe was created. And the awesome thing about that, so faith, God's faith is a creative force. And when he says something, boom, it goes out and, and, and it, it accomplishes what he said. It says and also in Isaiah 55. But the good thing about that, if you look to Romans chapter 12, it tells us, that he's given each and every one of us a measure of that faith. So God's given us a measure of his faith, so the faith that he put in us, not just us, people, period. Man, woman, saved, unsaved, everybody, he gave a measure of his faith. So so that when we believe something, it's created. Simply believe. Whether you know Jesus or not, that is a law. Remember the word says, faith is a law. So it, it, like Pastor said, it, 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 it actually, 100% of the time, it works. 100% of the time. Because you believe it. Even if you believe, just take it back to the natural. You know, being raised, if you, you, if you had a, a parent or somebody that told you, mother that told you, you just like your little no good daddy. And if you, you heard that for 15 years, imagine how you would be. By the time you get 16, 17, and 18, 
you're going to snap in your mind. Well, I'm just like my no good daddy. And there you go. You're going to start acting on it because you believed it. And faith is a law and it's going to work. So if you believe you no good, you're going to be no good. So you have to have a change of mind. And so Romans chapter 3 tells us, again, I mean 12 tells us, 12, 3 tells us we have a measure of that faith. Also, if you back up, it tells us now we got also got to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So for us that are believers, we have to start putting on the mind of Christ by renewing it through the word. When we renew our minds through the word, then there's a shift that takes place. A shift, it, it, takes, it pushes out the old. Remember how it says in, um, I think it's in John 1, we talk about how when light goes forth, it, it, the darkness can't stop it. It pushes it out of the way. We need to put the word in us the same way and let that word go in our minds and push out that old stuff. Push it out and let the word do what it's designed to do. See, our problem is most of the time we think we have to cause the word to come to pass, even in our own lives. Well, that's not what I read. For it says, it's God that's working in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's also, I think it's in Philippians 1, 6, I believe, how being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you, he will perform it. It didn't say you would perform it. He would perform it. Too many times we try to perform it. I'll just be real. I got to be good today. I'm going to not do this, and I'm going to do that. Ooh. And most of the time, we flat on our faces. We go for it for a little bit. We can, uh, that, that, that human will power has, has a little bit of power in it. For about two or three days, then after that, we're back on our face again. Because we started on our own strength and not the strength of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not in your own power, in his power. Um, where was I going for that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> One thing that's interesting about faith, Pastor's always exhorted us. He said, faith is a muscle. And because, because it's a muscle, it has to be exercised. It has to be strengthened. Bonda stole my scripture. <laughs> and I was going to read Hebrews 5. <laughs> <laughs> I was. So I'll just come from a different angle with Hebrews chapter 5. <laughs> um, but the good thing about it, I don't know what it says. So, but the good thing about Hebrews chapter 5, it talks about how when we should be teachers, somehow we, we, we trip and we got to be taught again, the beginnings, the first principle of the oracles of God. And, but it says, strong meat belongs to those who by reason of use, yes. hallelujah, we have our senses exercised to, to discern both good and evil. But if you don't ever use it, yes. what happens to a muscle if you don't use a muscle in your body? Yes. It atrophies, exactly. And your faith is a muscle. What's going to happen to your faith if you never use it? Right. It's going to atrophy. Right. And then when it atrophies, you have to go back to the beginnings again. you 36 year old in the Lord. 36 old in the Lord. <laughs> and now all of a sudden you got to, Jesus love me, this I know, for the Bible tell me so. Oh, that's not a scripture. Oh, oh well. I mean, look at that. I mean, you, we have to realize that faith has to be exercised. We have to put it on. We have to. I always tell folks one thing. I'm not afraid to mess up. I'm not afraid to. Uh, it, correct me. Uh, hey, correct me. I'd rather be corrected for doing something wrong than no, oh, I gotta stand still. I can't do nothing. <gasps> Come on, do something. Be bold enough to do something. Step out there for Jesus. Be, be bold enough to be a fool for Christ. When I was on campus a few years ago, when I was a student on campus, <laughs> I did not. I, I think I laid hands on almost everybody I knew. I, I preached to so many people it was crazy, but I didn't care. I even prayed for one girl that I, she was deaf, and I said, "Take your hearing aids out. Let's do this." Now, did it work instantly? No, it did not. I didn't care. I'm like, it ain't my reputation, so what I care? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really gonna look too bad. I mean, but I'm like, it's, I, don't, I didn't care. It's like, just be bold enough to just do it. The disciples prayed in the book of Acts for boldness so that they can preach the word. We can pray for boldness. I think that's one of the reasons I am so bold because I prayed that exact same scripture in the book of Acts. I said, Father, Anoint me with the Holy Ghost and with boldness that I can preach your word. 
and then laying the hands on the sick. I think that's why I laid hands on everybody because I was like, well, you said this, so let's do it. And I think outside of that one time of praying for someone that didn't get their healing for, for, um, for their deafness, every other healing he did, he manifested. Every one of them. Not a one time did he not do it. So I, I really believe because I was, well, I guess, bold enough to do it. But I was only bold enough to do it because of what I prayed. I saw this. I'm like, well, they did it. I can do it too. I, in certain things, when Jesus prayed certain prayers, I was like, well, if Jesus prayed it, I can pray it too. Amen. It's like the, when he said, um, Father, glorify me that, thy, that I might glorify thee. I've prayed that scripture. Yeah. I said, Father, glorify me so that in this circumstance I can glorify Jesus. And so I was like, if he prayed, I can pray it too. Yeah. And that has to be our, our, our stance. Yeah. If Jesus did it, you know that, that little wrist thing, what would Jesus do? Get, get in here and find out what he would do. Then do it. Then just do it. Be bold and just do it. Um, Romans 10, we know, talks about if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised from the, you know, believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you do anything to cause that salvation other than just believe? No. So, what makes us think we got to do stuff so. We gotta work this thing out. We gotta make sure everything lined up correctly and, and, and everything just looks good and right. No, you will wear yourself out. You will wear yourself out. And so, cool, I got five more minutes, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then if that means, if we have to do the same thing is just taking the word, putting it on. One thing I like about, um, Romans 10, but in verse 17 it says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, we know that, but also, I think, yeah, well, let's, let's stick with that one for a second. Since faith is going to increase, that's really what it's talking about, faith increasing by hearing, period. So when you hear something, that's what we talk, get the example of the boy that, that believed his, whoever told him, he's just like your no good daddy. He heard, and he heard, and he heard, because it's talking about the continual repetitive hearing. So he heard and he heard and he heard and he heard and he believed. So we need to do the same thing. But what's interesting, God, I know Pastor shared this before. He said, that scripture, he, put, he has a little a twist on it and I, and I liked it. He said that faith begins where the will of God is known. When you know what God has said to you, trust me, you will stand. I don't care what comes your way, you will stand. I'll get ready to wind up with this little bit. Little bit. Some of you guys know this, um, not everybody knows, but um, a few years ago, I had a little encounter with a, with, with a witch who was. But, um, but the thing of it is, not even the, the purpose of not, I me mean, telling you, it's not even just the, the, to say it, just say it for the sake of saying it. It's to say it to let you know we are prepared. We are well prepared. We get some good teaching here. I remember when I was going through some of that stuff, Vonda was ministering one time, and I came up to her afterwards, and I, told, I, I, I thanked you. I don't know if you even remember, but I, I thanked her. I said, thank you for going through what you have gone through because you've shown us the way. So then when I was going through what I was going through at my job, I thought about her and Pastor. I'm like, oh, shoot. There's all kind of strength going to come out of this because, I mean, it was, it was a crazy situation, I will, I will admit, but I learned so much through it that I wouldn't change a thing. I would not change a thing. She talked about earlier how when you go through something, stuff is worked in you at a whole nother level. I can talk about the certain things because of what I've been through. By reason of use, have our senses exercised. And when I went through that whole situation, I learned about God's sovereignty more than I ever had. And we've read it plenty. And God is God. He's Lord of all. I learned it on another level. I learned about humility. I learned that there is a fine line between humility and humiliation. Yeah. <laughs> humiliation is to the world. Oh, Lord, what are they going to think about me? Going through this, that, and the other. But if you endure it, if you make it, if you just don't, don't get out, don't be so fast to run out of that heat, heated situation. When you go through it, that, hum that humiliation is working humility in you. 
And that is a power that you cannot get. The stuff that I've learned, I couldn't read in the book. I couldn't have learned it, I learned it through somebody else's testimony. I had to experience it myself. And I'm telling you that when you go through something like that, and you, you really learn to, to trust the Lord through it, I had to yield. The biggest, tr the biggest thing, it wasn't even fighting the witch. It wasn't, it wasn't that. The biggest thing for me is, and the hardest thing, was learning to yield my will to the will of the Father. Because I told him, I don't want to be in this situation. And he told me, but I, you can't leave. And it was at a, I'll, I'll just close with this. They, they had demoted me. I was a, it was the executive director, the assistant associate director, and then there was me. And then they bumped me all the way down to the level of a counselor. I used to supervise three different levels of supervisors. And all of a sudden now I'm on the bottom of the rung as a counselor. And so the natural thing was, you know, I'm out of here. I'm educated. I, I know plenty of people in the field. I can go anywhere I want to go. I don't need to deal with this. And so what, what had happened was a, a friend of mine, some of you may remember her name was Fortunate. She encouraged me to pray before I leave. And so I talked to the Lord about it. I, <laughs> yeah, I did. And um, he said, you, you, you can't leave. So I told him, okay. So if I can't leave, I'm going to need your help. So I need you to close the door so that I cannot leave. Because I told him, I said, because if I see a crack of light, I'm busting through it. <laughs> Those are my exact words. Those were my exact words. I was being honest. I wasn't, I, you can't lie to the Father. And guys, I'm telling you, he closed the door. Remember, I'm educated. I have experience. I know all these people. It did no good. I got no callbacks. I got no interviews. The one interview that I did get, they rejected me within less than a week. It take long enough to do a background check. <laughs> they told me no. I was like, dang, so I guess I can't leave. And so, so I was like, okay, Lord, well then you got to do something. I hired counselors. I can't live off of what a counselor makes. I know what they make. <laughs> I can't do that. So I went online to check and see. They only lowered my pay. They switched it from being sour to, to hourly, but they only lowered my pay about $2.26 an hour. So I became a very highly paid counselor. And I said, I supervised three levels of supervisors. I was making more than them <laughs> as a counselor. So when God wants to do something, you trust him through it, he will do it. He will do it. I promise you he will do it. And, th and through that process, I definitely learned some things about God's power. And to close, I'll say this. It's, it's a funny situation. But when I, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll say this. But, um, that happened. And so I'm going one night. I think I may have shared this with you. I'm not even sure. But I'm leaving to go live in my apartment. I'm literally going to get me a soda, I'm like going to get a Coke. So I'm around the street on the Van Nuys Boulevard, and all of a sudden, you know how you, you can picture a, a, a nucleus with the protons and the um, electrons spinning all around the atom? Well, all of a sudden, I'm walking. All of a sudden, I felt this thing, this wind of like just swirling. <laughs> all this sound and wind swirling all around me. And I'm, I'm, I'm physically reacting to this thing. It was not a windy night, but I'm physically reacting to it. I'm like, Lord, what is this? And the first thing out of my mouth, I said, what is this? I said, I feel authority. Wow. And I was like, what is this? And, I, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, and it ended. Then I went and got my soda. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, I did. <laughs> But the next day when I went to work, um, I'm, I'm going to get a kid. Someone had sent me to go get a kid. So I walked past the counselor and two, and two kids. They were standing at one end of the hallway. As I walked past them, the kids reacted. What you doing walking around here acting like you in charge? I'm like, whatever. I'm looking for so-and-so. I go to the, the other end of the hallway, to the day room, the common area, to look for the kid. I walk in there. What are you doing acting like you, you walk around here acting like you Kenny? Well, who was Kenny? He was the new executive director. I'm like, no. I went, that night I went downstairs to see a friend before I went home. And I walked down there, I saw, I said, oh cool. So I go there and I said, hey, and, and, and three counselors were down there, Kermit, thank God you came. I'm like, what? They said, we've been trying to get these kids in the bed for the last 20 minutes. They saw you walking down the hallway and they just took off. And I'm like, I didn't see them, so I didn't know. 
I, they weren't there when I got there. And so that was, that's what happened then. When I, I finally did leave and believe in the place that turned me down, I'm at now, I've been there 10 years. But, but it was in God's timing that they called me. And so I went back one day to work at the old facility just as an on-call counselor. And you don't know where you're gonna be until you get there and then they assign you to go where you go. They sent me to the first floor. Well, on the first floor at that time, they were having a meeting with all the staff, all the kids, all the administrators, everybody was here at the meeting. And it was loud. I was like, what the heck is going on here? And so as I'm getting, I'm walking in there and I kid you not guys, I didn't say a word. I just walked there, walked up there and I just stood. And cause I, I forgot this. When I got out the car, when I got there, this, this is what I said, this is the truth, this is what I said. I closed the door, I said, I don't care what's going on here. Whatever is happening, it stops now because I'm here. That's what I said. I don't even remember if I said in Jesus' name. I assume I did. I'm not 100% sure, it's been a few years, but I, I probably didn't know me. Anyway, when I went in there, this loud meeting was happening and all of a sudden I just stood there within a matter of probably two minutes, maybe two to three tops. This loud meeting just and you could just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm tripping off of it, I'm like, <laughs> I said, what the heck? I'm like, that's deep. But all, all that example, it really honestly is to say, when it comes to faith, if you just trust the Lord, yeah. if you just trust him through whatever you're going through, and like, like Rhonda said, there's nothing that's going on in your life that's, first of all, that's a waste of time. Because he works all things for your good. Even our foolishness, he works for our good. And I do some foolish things, trust me. <laughs> and so, trust him through your mistakes, and because he's a, he's a loving father. How could we not trust him? He loves us, he, just like Leonard said with his kid. He may cut up, but when he comes to him, he, he forgives him. There's forgiveness in his arms. He's not saying that, oh, you bad kid. He loves him. Our father loves us. It's no different. In fact, it's magnified how much he loves us. And so trust that when it's time for you to go before your father, that his arms are open too. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Turn your Bibles to Ruth, chapter one. I've been studying this book probably on and off for about seven years. And it seems like God is kind of like, uh, walked me through it. I feel like I've experienced a lot of this. And you don't want to teach anything you ain't lived and you ain't experienced, amen? And so, um, and I know it's a book about a woman, but guys, please don't leave in your heads. We'll just call it Rufus for you, okay? <laughs> Turn to the book of Rufus. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm going to quickly, <clears throat> there's so much in this book, but I only, I know I only have 15 minutes, so I, I've been asking the Lord to show me how to like, you know, so give you a synopsis. Um, our topics was faith, um, righteousness, and love, and I'm probably going to hit all three of these in here, so let's, uh, let's go for it. There are seven characters in the book of Ruth. Seven. Each one of them have a name. And in the Hebrew, if you had a name, if you named somebody, like today we call, you know, if we say Aisha, <laughs> that could mean anything. It could mean something crazy, right? But the Hebrews, when they named somebody, they, it was a purpose behind their name. And so I'm going to give you real quickly the names of every character, the seven characters, and what their name means. The husband, his name was Elimelech. His name means, my God is king. My God is king. That ministers to me as a husband. Because how can I tell my wife to submit if I ain't submitted to my father? I'm going to say that one again. How can I tell my wife to submit to me if I'm not submitted to my head? My God is king is Elimelech. Naomi's name means joy, pleasant. They had two sons, Malon, Chilion. Malon, sickly. Chilion, weakly. They married two people, two Moabitess women. One's name was Orpah, the other one's name was Ruth. Orpah's name 
means stiff neck, rebellious. Ruth's name means relationship, loyalty, intimacy. Let's look at verse 1. I'm going to be skipping around, but there's a point that I'm making with this, all of this. Oh, there's a seventh one. Boaz. I didn't say bozo. I said Boaz. Guess what his name means? Kinsman Redeemer. Number seven, the number of completion. In verse 1, it says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and there was a certain man in Bethlehem of Judah who went to so sojourn. I'm reading from the Amplified, so it might be a little different for you guys. To sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. The man's name was, my God is king, Elimelech. And his wife's name was Naomi. And his two sons' name was Malon and Chilion. And they were... Ephrathites from Bethlehem of Judah, and they went to the country of Moab and continued there. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775. Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW1307, that is, tape offer number TITW1307, Hi, you know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.